Okay, so the, we talked about finite math systems last time. And so those were systems and we saw a bunch of tables that defined what the outcome of operations were and it was fun. So now we're gonna talk about a specific type of finite math system called a modular math system. So what we do to start out is we take the clock 12 math system that we talked about last time that you have on your sheet. Uh, the circular math system is another way to call it. And we're going to, we're going to adjust it. Instead of the elements being one through 12, like on the clock, what we're going to do, and we're doing this so that we have an identity when addition is used, because if, uh, or a different identity when addition is used, then, then with the, with the, with the circular system, we're going to rewrite the elements as follows. So we're going to take the clock 12 system. It's going to function the exact same way as it did before. Only this time we're going to use the elements 0 through 11. So we're going to redefine the elements 0 through 11. And I think I counted right when I made the sheet that there should be. Yes, I did a great job. Okay, just enough blanks. So to... Uh, Together with the addition, this forms what's called a modulo, that's a new word, M-O-D-U-L-O, -O. I know my writing's terrible, okay, it forms a modulo 12 arithmetic system. And it functions in the same way, okay? It just circles around, but just now instead of the elements being one to 12, they are zero through 11. So in general, to have a modulo mathematical system, okay? We're going to use arithmetic, or excuse me, we're gonna use addition, but then you need to have, uh, you need to have the same number of elements as the modulos, for instance, in a modulo six. Now I get tired of saying the word modulo. So mathematicians, because they are lazy, I've told you this before, they like to abbreviate or symbolize anything they can. What they say is this is just a mod system, mod six. Mod is just short for modulo. You can use whatever you want, I really don't care. So the elements for a mod six system though, we need six elements. They are gonna be zero through five. Okay, and that's going to form the basis of our modulo six or our mod six system. Just like I needed 12 elements for my mod 12, my clock 12, so they are zero through 11. So real quick, the example right below is for you. List what you would propose the elements for a mod eight system to be. What are the eight elements we're going to, to need? And what did you write down? What elements? Sure, that sounds fantastic. Starting with zero, and we're gonna go all the way up to seven. Okay, this, those would be the elements. Those would be the things that we get as our outcomes. Uh, and those are the things that we would, <coughs> excuse me, combine together. <clears throat> so in general, a mod M mathematical system has M elements, and a binary operation. And the bi main binary operation we are gonna use in here is arithmetic. So here's an example of a, a very general way you could use this. This is an example of a modular arithmetic system. If I tell you that today is Monday, which it just happens to be, good, because I typed this up this morning. So congratulations, Perkster, you knew what day it was. I wanna know 23 days from today, what will the day be? So without, I, I would like to avoid, you know, counting out, whoops, 23 different places. I'd like to know, is there a shorter way that I could accomplish this? Well, yes, here's how you work in a modular system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number 23. And my days of the week, my mod 7 system, it repeats every how many elements? In the, in the clock 12 system, it repeated how many elements? Every 
12. So that was a mod 12 system. It repeated every 12. In a mod seven, my days of the week, it repeats every how many elements? Seven, right? Every seventh day we get back to Monday. Right. So if I thought about this every every seven things, I'm back to Monday. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 23 and I'm going to divide it by seven because I know every seven elements I'm back where I started. OK, that's a circular system. So I do that. Seven goes into 23 three times. I don't really care about that. That means it's three full weeks. What I care more about is the remainder. So three times seven is 21, 23 minus 21 leaves me two. So that tells me what day of the week is it going to be 23 days from today? I go three full weeks and then two more. My remainder is two. So what is it gonna be two days from today? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, so it's going to be Wednesday. So notice I was able to do that problem without counting 23 days on my fingers, as I was saying, the days of the week, because I don't care about the three full weeks. They just take me back where I started. What I care about is the remainder, how far off, and then we hop to Wednesday. So what I would like you to do, same thing, what day will it be 30 days from today? Actually, that's a terrible problem. I'm, I'm going to have to delete that because it's just... It's just Wednesday again, it's another week. So that's actually, I'll, I'll mention what I accidentally did there, but let's do, uh, let's do 47. Yes, 47 days from today will be what? So what I hope you did is I hope that you took the number 47 and you said, how many times, how many cycles do I go through my, my mod seven system? So seven times six is 42. That leaves me a remainder of five. And so from Monday, I go five days. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what we have is this in my modular system. We are developing what is called congruences, okay? And I'll define this, uh, I'll define this more explicitly in a minute, but what we see is if I hop 23 days in advance in my mod seven system, or I just hop two, I end up in the same place. So what I would say is in my mod seven, in my days of the week system, 23 is congruent to, Two, okay, they mean the same thing. And the same thing is true with the number we just picked. 47 is congruent to five. Again, they mean the same thing. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna change the, uh, oh no, I'm not changing it. I'm just generalizing it instead of days of the week. What we're gonna do is we're gonna determine what number zero through six, the following numbers are equivalent to mod seven. So I'll do the first one. You could probably do it on your own, but I just feel like I need to be doing something. So I'm gonna take the number 60 and I'm gonna divide it by seven. Well, seven goes into 68 times. Eight times seven is 56. If I'm remembering my multiplication tables, that leaves me four. And so here's what I'm gonna write. The symbol for congruence is an equal sign with three bars. So what we're gonna say mod seven is that 60 means the same thing. It's congruent to four. So please do the same thing for 84.
So 84, I'm going to divide it by 7 because this is a mod 7 system. So 7 goes into 8 once. Bring down the 4. 7 goes into 14 twice. That leaves me a remainder of 0. So it, with 84, I'm back exactly where I started. So 84 is congruent to 0. Okay, Because there's no remainder in the mod 7 system. Do one more. Do 412. So I'm going to take my 412, I'm going to divide it by 7. 7 goes into 41 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35, so 41 minus 35 is 6. I'll bring down the 2. 7 goes into 62 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56, and that leaves me 6. So in my mod 7 system, 412 is exactly the same thing as the number 6. They mean the same thing. That's what's called congruence. So a number A is congruent. A number A is congruent to a number B modulo M. And we write that, I just told you, written like this right here with an equal sign with three bars. If A and B have the same remainder when you divide by M, which is called the modulus. So earlier in our, uh, our days of the week problem, we saw mod seven that 23, okay? If we went 23 days, that was congruent to two, okay? That was the same thing as far as the days of the week occurred. Hopping forward 23 days is the same thing. It's the equivalent thing of hopping forward two days. You end up at the same spot. So do me this favor, find another number that's congruent to two mod seven. In fact, there is an infinite number of answers, okay? So you got a good chance of finding one. So according to the definition of being congruent, a number is congruent to 2 mod 7 if it has a remainder of 2 when divided by 7. Okay, so if you were struggling, that's how you know if it has a remainder of 2 when divided by 7. Give me another number that has a remainder of 2. Okay, 65. 9 times 7 is 63. So 65, somebody else said what? 38, 30, yes, sorry, I just can't hear, I apologize. 30 is congruent to two because seven goes into 34 times, leaves a remainder of two. In fact, here's another way you could do this. Okay, so those are great. And any other number you could have given me that when you divide by seven has a remainder of two is a perfectly wonderful answer. What you could have done is this. If I start with two, then every seven hops, I'm back at another number that's equivalent. So the net, what's the next number, do you think, after two? The next number would be what? Nine. Nine is equivalent or congruent to two. What would the next one be? Sixteen. I just keep adding seven because I'm doing another loop around. So then the next one we already saw was 23. And then I already was told 30. What's going to be the next one after 30? 37, I'm just doing a couple more because I just want to make sure you're catching on. All of these numbers that I'm writing down are congruent to 2 mod 7. Okay, so just a couple more. I add 7 more. Now I'm at 44. 
I add seven more, I'm at 51, and I'm gonna put an ellipsis here because we could keep doing that same thing. All of these numbers, every one of them is congruent to two in a mod seven system, every one of them. So what that means I create is what's called congruence classes, classes of congruence. So in my mod seven system, I have the numbers zero through six. Those are my basic numbers that form the system. And then all the rest of these numbers are congruent to one of those. So for instance, I'm just gonna keep counting. The number seven would be congruent to zero because seven divided by seven has a remainder of zero. Eight would be congruent to one. We just saw a moment ago on the bottom of the previous page that nine is congruent to two. So 10 would be congruent to three. I'm just counting now. Four is congruent to 11. Five is congruent to 12. Six is congruent to 13. And we could keep doing this on and on and on. And we're going to. I left several lines just because I thought it'd be super fun to spend a minute or two doing this. Or you can go up and down. What are the numbers congruent to zero? Well, zero is congruent to seven, which would be congruent to 14, to 21, to 28. All of these numbers in this column are in the congruence class zero. They all are equivalent in the mod seven system. And then 35, we'll go down to that one right there. So do me a favor, I'll give you a minute or 90 seconds, go through and fill in the rest of the congruence classes for the mod seven. It doesn't matter which way you do this, if you're gonna count from left to right, or if you're gonna fill in each class by adding seven, you're gonna get the same thing. So my next, my next row here would be 15, and then 16, and 17, 18, 19, 20. So what I have now is 15 is congruent to eight, which is congruent to one. All of these form the congruence class one. Okay, so then 22, 23, 24, 25, six, 27, or you could go down the columns. So the next one here would be 29. The next one after that would be 36. So the point that I'm trying to make here, uh, and I'm just gonna say it one more time in a different way. All of these numbers in the six column they are congruent and all of them are in the congruence class six. You would not in a modular, in modular, in modular arithmetic, you would not give the answer 41 or 34 or 27. All of these, you would give the answer six. They all fall into the same class. So to, to illustrate that point, I'm going down to the next example. So I've switched the modular system just to keep things spicy. Instead of mod seven, we're doing this mod, mod nine now. So we're gonna give the answer to each of these arithmetic problems, mod nine. So for instance, what's seven plus eight? We all know seven plus eight is 15. Yes, thank you for still being awake. So seven plus eight is 15, but that is not an answer, mod nine. Mod nine, the only legal answers to give me are zero through eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 15 and divide it by nine. Nine goes into 15 once and leaves me a remainder of six. So the answer is 15 is congruent to six. That's, they're in the same congruence class. The next one, eight minus five, what's eight minus five? Three, three is already one of the congruence classes. It's, it's zero through eight. So I'm just gonna say that eight minus five is congruent to three. There's nothing else that I need to do on that one. 
Seven times five, you pop that into your calculator, seven times five is 35. But again, that's not a legal answer. That's, that's not one of my congruence classes. So I have to figure out what the remainder is. So I'm gonna take the 35, I'm gonna divide it by nine. Nine goes into 35 three times, that's 27. And that leaves me a remainder of eight. So seven times five is congruent to eight. It's in the congruence class of eight. The last example here is, what do I do if I come up with a negative number? So again, two minus five, you pop that into your calculator, you remember your arithmetic. Two minus five is what? Negative three. And then the easiest way to figure out what congruence class that's in is just to add the modulus to it. So I'm just going to add nine to this. So all of my all of my numbers in the same equivalence class are going to be nine apart. So negative three plus nine turns out to be in the congruence class of six. So in fact, negative three and 15, they're in the same congruence class because you get the same remainder when you divide by nine. So I've just given you a, a set of problems that's the same sort of thing. Next example, I've changed the modulus to five. So evaluate those four problems uh, that I gave you there, mod five. All right, so I'm just gonna get started. If you're still working, keep working. If you got any questions, let me know. Don't let me just keep talking and boring you to death. Make sure that you at least understand. So 20 minus five is 15, but again, mod five, I'm just gonna write out the only legal outcomes. Mod five are these five numbers, zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so everything that I have should be in one of those five congruence classes. So the way I figure out which one is I take 15 and divide by my modulus. So five goes into 15 three times, and I have a remainder of zero. So 15 is congruent to zero mod five. Eight times seven, eight times seven is 56. That's fantastic news. But again, that is, that is going to be in one of these classes. So I have to figure that out. 56 divided by five. So that turns out to be that, and then goes in 11 times and leaves a remainder of one. So 56 is congruent to one because they share the same remainder. Nine plus 13, that is equal to 22. That's fantastic. And I know we're dealing with five. You might not even need to write down the division, but I'm just showing you just in case. Four times five is 20, leaves me a remainder of two. So nine plus 13 is in the congruence class of two. And then finally, the last one is a negative one. So two minus four is negative two. And so negative two, what congruence class is that in? I'm gonna add five to it. Negative two plus five means that it's in the congruence class three. Questions, comments, concerns about any of those problems? Okay, I'm just setting up for you how do we work in a modular arithmetic system, okay? It's just something that keeps repeating over and over and over. We're going to do a few more evaluating problems, okay? I'm going to do the first one, then I've got a like one for you to do as the, as the second one. So this time, though, instead of wondering what congruence class it's in, I'm giving you the congruence class, 
And I want to know what number minus four is in the congruence class three. Okay, great question. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem right here. What number minus four is in the congruence class three? We're doing this problem. I've defined the modulus to be five. Some of these problems have a different one. So just make sure you pay attention. Just treat this like you would treat a nice basic equation. If this was the equation x minus 4 equals 3, what would you do to both sides to solve it? I would add 4. Right? Does everyone agree with that? You remember, I know, bad algebra trauma, bad memories. I'm, I'm going to try not to reawaken any terrible memories beyond this. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and I get that the number that I'm looking for is in the congruence class. The same congruence class is 7. But again, I'm doing this modulo 5. Seven is not an answer, mod five, so I need to know what congruence class is seven in. Well, divide that by five, and I have a remainder of two. So the number that I'm looking for, this, this missing value, is the number two. Two minus four is in the congruence class of three. You might verify that. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And so now negative 2, when I go a full cycle around, when I add 5 to it, I'm at 3. Great. Worked out for me. So go ahead and do the B problem. The B problem is essentially the same thing. What congruence class, or excuse me, what plus 3 is in the congruence class of 2? Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the problem right here. I want to know what number plus three is in the same congruence class as two. I've kept the modulus the same. This is still mod five when we're doing this problem. So I'm going to subtract the three from both sides of this congruence. So I get the number that I'm looking for is congruent to negative one. Well, again, negative one is not a legal outcome mod five, only the numbers zero through four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a full cycle. So what am I going to add to the negative one to figure out what congruence class it's in? Yep, I'm going to add five to this. And so we get negative one plus five is four. So four is the number that when I add three to it, I'm in the congruence class of two. Well, I'm going to do the next two examples are, are again pretty much the same thing, but I just want to make sure I'm covering everything that you're going to see in the homework so that when when I don't see you for the next 48 hours that you don't get too mad at me. So the next one I just reverse the position of the question mark. So this time I have five minus some number is in the congruence class of seven. This time we're in the modulus of eight. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Well, again, I'm just going to treat this like a basic algebra equation. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the five from both sides. Don't forget this negative that's in front of the question mark, that minus sign. So I've got minus and a question mark. It's in the same congruence class as seven minus five or two. If this was an equation, what would I do to both sides to get rid of that negative in front of the question mark? Yeah, divide by negative one. I try not to assume too much algebra in this class. So uh, as far as this unit's concerned, that's probably the extent of your algebra knowledge that you need. And so this is in the same congruence class as negative two. Well, once again, negative two is not an answer. In my mod eight system, my, my answers are the eight values zero through seven. 
So I'm going to add eight to this. I'm gonna go one full cycle around, negative two plus eight is six. So that means five minus six is in the same congruence class as seven. I'll give you a minute or 75 seconds to go ahead and do the D problem. Okay, so we've got uh, this little equivalence. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides of the equivalence and I get negative. Question mark is in the same equivalence class as one. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one and I get that my question mark is in the same equivalence class as negative one. Again, that's not a legal outcome, mod seven. My legal outcomes are zero through six. So I'm gonna go one full cycle around. I'm gonna add seven to that and I get six. So three minus six is in the same equivalence class as four. Are we doing okay? I know this is goofy stuff, it's fun. It's fun for me, it takes me back to some introductory stuff I did long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, so. Just a couple more examples of the same sort of thing, this time with, uh, with multiplication. I'm gonna do the first one and then I've got two examples for you to do. So here's the thing. I'm gonna do two times what, two times something is in the congruence class of three. And this time I'm doing this mod five. I'll write that so I don't forget because I'm, I'm bound to forget that. So if this was algebra, which it's not, but if this was algebra, what would I do to both sides in order to, in order to, to get the question mark by itself? I would divide by two, but here's the problem. Okay? My only legal outcomes here in a mod five system are zero, one, two, three, and four. If I divide by two, I get 1.5. I don't even know what to do with a decimal in a modular arithmetic system. So here is the, the solution to that problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is a number equivalent to three that I can divide two into. So I'm just going to cycle around in my congruence class until I find a number that two will divide into. So what that means I'm going to add five to this. So when I add five, what do I get? Eight. Oh, good. I didn't have to work too hard. Two will divide into eight. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. Two times what? is congruent to eight. And now I'll divide both sides by two. We'll pretend that this is an algebra class. And so that my number is in the congruence class of four, which is a legal outcome in a mod five system. So two times four, two times four gives me eight and eight is congruent to three mod five. So we did everything very well. So I'd like you to do the same thing for the B problem. Four times what ends up in the congruence class of three?
Okay, so I've got four times something is in the same congruence class as three, and we're doing this mod five. Okay, that sounds great. Well, again, when I go to divide by four, three divided by four is 0.75. That's not doing me any good. So I need something that I can divide by four. So I'm going to add my modulus. I'm going to go a full cycle around to see what's the next value in this congruence class. So when I add five, the next value is eight. Does four go into eight? Again, I didn't make you work too hard on this one because it's just your first problem on your own. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four and I get the unknown number is in the same congruence class as two. Okay, so four times two is congruent to three mod five. So one more time, do the C problem. You might have to work a little bit harder on the C problem. Uh, but you'll, you'll be able to do it. All the problems that I give you on the test are doable. There's going to be none that you're going to look forever and never be able to find something. Okay, so this one says four times what is congruent to three. Uh, this time we're in a mod seven system. So I don't have, well, do I have room here? Let me write it, mod seven. I just barely have enough room. I did not budget super well. So again, four doesn't go into three. So I'm gonna add my modulus. I'm gonna go to the next value in the congruence class. And when I do that, it's 10. Can I divide? four into 10 evenly. Nope, so I'm gonna do it again. The next number in this congruence class is 17. Does four go into 17? No, but I promised you that everything is doable here. And when I add one more, 17 and seven more, the next value in the congruence class is 24. Ah, I finally found it. The number that four will divide into. So four times what is congruent to 24? And what is the value? Six, yes, so six. Four times six is congruent to three in a modular seven system. All right, great. We doing okay? All right, well, you're done with the tough stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna cool down. I've just got a few more problems to do and, and then, uh, then we'll be able to celebrate the end of another, another day. So we're gonna now take the problem that we did earlier. If you remember, I said, it's Monday. What day is it gonna be 23 days from now? And that was a pretty simple thing to do. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a, another layer of difficulty. And so we're gonna meet Bob. Bob is our security guard friend. And he is working a schedule, his, his working schedule is to work for six days and then have two days off. Okay, so he works a six and a two. So if today is the third day that Bob has been working, let's determine. So I did this once before for my father-in-law. My father-in-law used to do, he had a weird schedule. He used to work three, off three, work two, off two. And then he always had trouble figuring out what, when could he take a vacation or when could he plan something if he was, or could he go out to dinner on a, a particular day because he worked third shift. So uh, I showed him how to do this and it changed his life. So math sometimes works. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to write out Bob's schedule right here. So Bob works and then works, he works for six days, four, five, six, and then he's off two days. I'm gonna use O for off. And then he starts the whole cycle again. Well, 
what modulo is this system? It repeats every how many days? Everybody got that? It's eight. Okay, he works six days, he's off two, and then he's back where he starts. So this is a mod eight system. That's how Bob's going to figure out if he can if he can go away to the beach for the weekend on a particular set of days or not. Okay. So for instance, Bob wants to know, will he be working 60 days from today or will he be off? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to divide, uh, we're going to divide 60 by eight. Eight goes into 67 times, seven times eight is 56, leaves me a remainder of four. We're told in the problem that today is the third day that Bob's working. So one, two, three, I'm gonna put a little T right above that day for today. Okay, so four days from now. So remember in this system, this mod eight system, going out 60 days is the same as going out four days. They are in the same congruence class. So let's see, what's Bob doing four days from now? One, two, three, four. Will Bob be working four days from now? No, he is off. So will he be working? No, he is off four days from now. So do B. I mean, this is an, I think once you, it clicks, this is not a difficult thing to do. I'm hoping because I'm going to put a couple of these on the test and I, I want you to be able to mop up all those points. So I'm going to divide 82 again by 8 because this is a mod 8 system. So 8 goes into 82 10 times. 10 times 8 is 80, leaves me a remainder of 2. So will Bob be working two days from now? Well, let's see. Today is the third day. So 1, 2, is Bob working? Yes, Bob indeed is. I'm going to help you with the last one. Both of those problems we did, we were looking forward. Uh, but maybe, maybe Bob is the witness to a murder or something, and the police ask him, were you working 124 days ago? Well, that's a long time. Bob might have trouble remembering. I know I would, but it works the same forwards or backwards. So, for instance, I'm going to take the 124 now. I'm going to divide it by 8. 8 goes into 12 once. Bring down the 4. 8 goes into 44 five times. That leaves me remainder of four. Only this time, instead of counting forward four days, I'm gonna count back four days because we wanna know what it was 124 days ago. So we'll do that. So I go one, two, three, four. And what was Bob doing 124 days ago? He was, was he working? No, he was not. Let me draw that in. So here's today, here's one day, here's two days. Then the third hop takes me back to the being off. And then the fourth one takes me right there. Hey, what's up? All right, I probably should have had you do this. Sorry, uh, go ahead and work on the next example. Maybe you've already done it, uh, but go, I'll give you a couple minutes. It's the same sort of thing. I've just changed the schedule of the person.
All right, let's give this try. See what's going on with this person. We've got a pilot and they are scheduled to fly and it looks like this. They are going to fly for five consecutive days and then they're gonna rest for four. Seems like a pretty good schedule. And so what I want to know is, is the pilot flying or resting 60 days from today? So this is a mod what system that we're gonna use. It's mod nine. So we're gonna take 60 and we're gonna divide it by nine. So nine times six is 54. That leaves me six. So if today is the second day of the pilot's shift, so that's today right here, the second day of flying, six days from today, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. The pilot is in the third day resting. Ninety days from today. Well, since it's a mod nine system, what's the remainder when I divide ninety by nine? Zero. So he, the pilot is in the exact same part of his or her schedule that they are now. So that is, uh, they are in the second day flying. And then again, 240 days ago, it works the same in reverse as it does forward. So 240, I'm going to divide that by nine. Uh, nine goes into 24 twice, leaves me six. Nine goes into 60. Uh, we just saw that a second ago, six times, leaves me a remainder of six. But this time, instead of counting forward six, I'm counting backwards six. So one day backwards takes me to the first day of the schedule. Two days backwards takes me to resting three days, four days, five days, six days. So 240 days ago, the pilot was in the last day flying. We doing okay? Did I do my division okay? Because that's always uh, that's always up for grabs. Okay, last thing to do here, and then we'll be done for the day. I appreciate your uh, your patience and endurance doing all this. The last thing is we're now going to link this together with what we talked about last time. Okay, so modular systems do form uh, do form finite mathematical systems. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're just going to take a moment and I'm going to get you started to fill in this mod five table. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little just to remind myself that this we're doing this mod five. So zero plus anything, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, zero plus three is three, zero plus four is four. In the next row, one plus zero is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, one plus three is four. Now here's where we've got to remember we're in a modular system because one plus four is five. What congruence class is five in, in my mod five system? Zero. It's in zero. So do me a favor, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds, fill in the rest of the table of, of this mod five edition table. Okay, so two plus zero is two, two plus one is three, two plus two is four, two plus three is five, which you just told me a minute ago is congruent to zero, and two plus four is six, and when I divide six by five, the remainder is one, and you can see the table start to repeat itself, I don't think it's too, uh, I don't think it's too bad to see the pattern of what's going on, three plus zero is three, three plus one is four, three plus two is five, which is in the congruence class zero, three plus three is six, which divided by five is in the congruence class one and three plus four is seven and seven one divided by five leaves remainder of two. So it's in the congruence class of two. And last but not least, four plus zero is four, four plus one is five. And I was just about to write down five, but then five is in the congruence class of zero. So 
Uh, don't make the same mistake that I almost made. Four plus two is six. It has a remainder of one. Four plus three is seven. has a remainder of two. And four plus four is eight. It has a remainder of three. And there is my chart that represents the mod five system. So here's the last thing for the day. This is a nice review of where we've been. I'm going to give you two or three minutes. What I would like you to do now is determine, is this mathematical system defined by this table, is it a commutative group? And as always, assume the associative property does hold. Just show me an example. Okay, that's what we do. What is the first characteristic something has to have if it's going to be a commutative group? We have to check what? Okay, is it closed? So is this closed? How do you know it's closed? I only get zero through fours inside the body of the table. Okay, so closed, yes it is. There are only zero uh, through four in the table, great. What's the second thing that has to hold if this is going to be a commutative group? Okay, it has to have an identity. Does this have an identity? And if so, what is it? Yes, zero. zero is the identity. If I look at this first column of my, my, my values that are in my set, then when I add zero to it, I get the same exact column right here. So is there an identity? The identity is zero. Okay, so far, so good. What's the third thing I have to check? Okay, does each element has an inverse? So remember the inverse is the element you add in order to get the identity. So we need to see, is there something I can add to each element in order to get zero? So just going one by one, zero. Zero plus what gives me zero? Yeah, that's great. Zero plus zero is zero. Okay, one. One plus what gives me zero? Okay, one plus four is zero. Great. Two. Two plus what gives me zero? Okay, the three column right here. Two plus three equals zero. The three column. Three plus what gives me zero? And then last but not least, four. Four plus what gives me zero? One. So does each element have an inverse? The answer is yes. Okay, so we can keep going. Remember, on the test, if at any point, if I ask you the question, is this a, a group or is this a commutative group? And if at any point it fails, you do not have to go any further. So if you notice that it's not closed, then you just say, no, this is not closed. It can't be a group. Okay, and then you're done. You don't have to go through all the steps if it fails one. The associative property, I just told you to make up an example. You're doing this so that you can show me you know what the associative property is. So you've written down on your paper something like this. Okay, I'm going to do one plus two plus four. And I want to know, is that the same thing as one plus two plus four? Remember, 
The associative property, the order of the terms do not change. I have one, then two, then four, one, then two, then four. What changes is what's in the parentheses. So in the one plus two being in parentheses, I start there, one plus two is three. And three plus four, when I go to my table, three plus four is two. Great. On the other side, two plus four, two plus four, when I go to the table is one. And one plus one is two. So we have just shown that at least for that particular example, the associative property holds. The associative property is difficult to prove. It's way beyond uh, our skill level in here. So uh, I will always tell you when it is and is not uh, valid. And you're just gonna show me an example. The last thing is I need to show if this is commutative or not. How can I show if, the, if this uh, system is commutative? What do I do? Yeah, I draw the line through the diagonal through the sames, and then I see, is it the same triangle of values on the other side? So here is my diagonal for the sames. And when I draw that, do I get the same thing above and below that? Yeah, I got ones here. I've got twos here. I've got threes on both sides here and fours and zeros. So yes, commutative, yes, because it's the same on both sides of the diagonal.